Hi dear students, have a tremendous and great day. Today we discuss the very important topic, techniques of scientific management. So this topic is very important for 1 max, 2 max, 4 max and 8 max. Very important topic. So in this techniques of scientific management as propounded by F.W. Taylor, the father of scientific management, we have several very important and unique techniques to increase the efficiency and productivity in the organization. The first one is functional foremanship, second one is standardization and simplification of work, third one is work study techniques in the work studies techniques, time study, method study, motion study and fatigue study and the next one is mental revolution and the last one is differential piece weight system or differential piece rate system. These are the very important and deliberate techniques for optimum utilization of resources in order to increase quality output through less time and less cost. So these techniques are very important not only for improving productivity, these techniques are highly essential to minimize organizational cost, I mean to minimize the production cost and to minimize the time of the production and to minimize the consumption of resources and to minimize unnecessary steps and activities in the production and to minimize unnecessary moments totally for increasing efficiency and effectiveness of day to day activities in the production department these techniques are very very important and these are deliberate techniques of management the deliberate techniques of management are the deliberate techniques of production and operations management dear students in the production and operations management these techniques are very important the first one already we have discussed in a previous class that is functional foremanship See functional foremanship, this is related to the factory's administration. In the factory's administration, the first person factory manager, under the factory manager, two sub departments, one is planning department, another one is production or execution department, under the control of factory manager. So here factory manager is responsible for both production and execution process sorry planning and production process or planning and execution process. In a functional foremanship, eight foremans, four foremans under planning in charge and remaining four under production in charge because a foreman or a single person cannot perform all type of activities and a single person cannot take in charge of both planning and production hence eight foremans are very important. And at the same time, we should think of, we cannot expect various type of qualities and skills from the same person, right? And same person or a person cannot perform all type of activities in the organization. Hence, to control, monitor and execute prediction activities and to draft and prepare certain plans and strategies, we need eight foremans as per the functional foremanship. So in the functional foremanship chart, eight foremans, four foremans under planning, four foremans under production. Under planning in charge, instruction card clerk, root clerk, time and cost clerk, disciplinarian. And under production in charge, gang boss, speed boss, repair boss, and inspector totally eight foremans used to play very important role on day to day production activities in order to take production process towards quality output functional foremanship the next one is standardization and simplification of work keep it in mind students this is very important standardization and simplification of work. So here what is standardization? Standardization. Here standardization means upgrading, improving, 
designing and redesigning right modifying changing bringing changes to the existing system existing methods of operation as per the changes in external environment right that is called standardization in general meaning in general sense standardization but as per ncrt standardization means setting standards setting standards to resources setting standards to materials setting standards to machinery setting standards to technology and setting standards to each and every inputs of the organization in order to increase quality output in order to improve efficiency standardization is very important why standardization what are the objectives of standardization through standardization we can expect quality output the best quality we can expect and through standardization we can increase market share and market leadership and through standardization we can increase our profit through standardization we can satisfy the customer by giving quality product that is called standardization so the companies or the factory manager must implement this while purchasing raw material while recruiting employee while establishing methods of operation while purchasing machinery right everything should be very standardized for everything standards must be established as per the standards resources activities functions machineries everything to the organization that is called standardization or improving existing methods systems and activities in the organization is called standardization next one is simplification of work here simplification means make, making work or putting end putting end to the unnecessary activities in the organization putting an end to the unnecessary activities in the organization to make work as very simple to the employee to make work as user friendly very easy to the employee simplification of work is very important how simplification of work by minimizing eliminating and reducing unnecessary diversity or unnecessary activities and unnecessary steps and movements of work in the organization is called simplification of work making work as very simple to the employee by minimizing and reducing unnecessary diversity of products unnecessary right sizes unnecessary varieties and production of excess of products than the customer requirement that is simplification of work so here the aim of simplification of work to make work as very simple and to reduce unnecessary productions unnecessary activities unnecessary designs unnecessary colors unnecessary varieties of products that is called simplification of work what is the objective of simplification of work to minimize cost to reduce the time to minimize cost and to reduce the time simplification of work is very important standardization setting standards to each and every activity each and every resources each and every machinery standardization to increase quality output and customer satisfaction simplification of work in the viewpoint of employee simplification means reducing unnecessary diversity of products design size colors and varieties in order to minimize cost and time of the production and to make work as very easy manageable possible and simple to the employee that is simplification of work next technique dear students work study techniques work study techniques action in the planning process work study techniques so before we start the work before we assign work to the employee work study is very important here work study what it means work study means conducting study on the work checking and analyzing the work 
analyzing each and every aspect of the work is called work study. See your work study techniques, first one is time study. Time study is very important. Here, what is time study? And what we do? And which concept we do? So here, what time study on the work? See in the work study techniques, first one is time study. Time study must be conducted on each and every task, each and every activity. Right? Time study. So here time study means conducting study to measure the time of each and every task to be completed or performed in the organization. So before assigning the work, time study must be conducted. Time study means measuring the required time for accomplishing each and every activity in the organization is called time study. Do remember students, what is time study? Time study nothing but measuring and identifying or recording, measuring, identifying, recording required time to be taken for accomplishing each and every activity in the organization. Then why time study? To set the standard time to the each and every activity. Time study is very important. Right? So before we assign work to the employee, we conduct time study of each and every task. Right? This is very important to set the standard time for each and every activity. Example, standard time, 10 minutes to produce each product. And what are the benefits from the time study? Through time study, firstly, we can set standard time to the each and every activity. Secondly, we can set standard performance to the each and every employee. And nextly, we can increase, we can increase production and the fourth one is to establish the reduction capacity of the organization to decide and determine the production capacity of the organization time study is very important if we assign work without time study if we assign work to the employee without time study the employee may accomplish the work or may not Right? may accomplish the work or may not or possible to the employee or impossible to the employee because don't know anything about the work we didn't conduct time study hence the employee may accomplish or may not to avoid that time study is very important time study nothing but measuring and calculating the required time to be taken for accomplishing each and every activity and time study is very important to set the standard time to the each and every activity of the organization and time study is very important to set standard time to each and every activity, to set standard performance to the each and every employee, to establish production capacity and to increase production. Next one is method study. Method, the way or the technique or the path. Right? So your method study, the method of production. So your method study means conducting study on available methods of production to find out the best way among available methods in order to reduce time and cost of the production is called method study. Right? To each and every activity there are several methods, there are several techniques to produce but here the criteria is selecting the best method. To select the best method there are some criteria. Right? Whichever we select, that method should take less time, less cost and less resources. Right? That is the objective of method study. Conducting study on the available methods of the production in order to select or choose the best method to reduce time, cost and resources of production is called method study. Next one is motion study. See your motion. The motion means the movement. The movement. Whose movement? So here the production movement. The movement study means motion study means conducting study on the production movement from the initial stage of production to till the last stage of production. 
then why motion study to reduce and eliminate unnecessary movements in the production or unproductive movements in the production unnecessary movements in the production so motion study is very important motion study means to produce the product so here motion means to produce the product we need to take several steps from the stage of raw material to till we get the finished product so raw material will move into the several stages to make it as a finished thing or finished product so here motion study means conducting study on the movement or conducting study on the production cycle dear students here motion study means conducting study on the production cycle or the production movement the two conducting study on each and every movement each and every step of the production in order to reduce unnecessary movements unnecessary steps or unproductive steps in order to minimize time and cost of the production is called motion study next one is fatigue study very important fatigue so your fatigue study means conducting study on employee right conducting study on employee then why fatigue study for the stress management purpose to reduce employee stress and to make employees to regain their interest stamina and energy towards the work fatigue study is very important and as we all know that the employees not only employees we all require require right the break while performing tasks regularly or continuously for every 2 or 3 for every 2 or 3 hours we expect the break we need the break why to relax to get stamina to regain our interest and energy towards the work right so in the organization the management must conduct fatigue study to provide right the work intervals or short breaks to the employee to regain their energy and interest towards the work so this is very important fatigue study to reduce employee boredom and to increase employee morale and interest and to increase productivity fatigue study is very important right or else if we give right if we give work continuously to the employee if we do not give work intervals what will happen employee become lethargic employee become boredom employee will lose interest employee will produce less quality at the initial first two hours will produce quality later employees will not show right much quality production they will not give much quality we cannot expect quality from the employee why why right first two hours they'll be very energetic very enthusiastic right they produce quality later their efficiency and their stamina and their interest will get decreases hence right rest is very important short breaks are very important right fatigue study next one is mental revolution dear students mental revolution here mental revolution means revolution means growth mental revolution so here mental revolution means changing the attitude behavior and perception of employer and employee in the organization employer and employee in the organization means mental revolution changing their attitude changing their perception changing their behavior changing their expectations and changing their way of thinking in the organization that is called mental revolution then why mental revolution to make employee and employer feel as family members in the organization to create family working environment mental revolution is very important and mental revolution is very important not only for this for the else aspects also which are those to replace i with the v right 
to replace i with the v and to maintain proper cooperation between management and workers and to share thoughts and ideas between the workers and the management right workers and the management and both employer and employee must feel as both are very important to the organization that is called real mental revolution dear students right both are very important without employer no factory no jobs to the employee without employees no production no profit to the organization both are very important and both must realize as right both are very important to the organization that is mental revolution next one is differential wage system the father of differential wage system f w o taylor so he propounded differential wage system he suggested and he has given new concept to the present industries that is differential piece rate system in order to minimize labor cost differential piece rate system so earlier right there was time rate system to overcome this differential piece rate system so here differential piece rate system nothing but paying wages to the employee or giving wages to the employee based on their production based on their output based on their output how much they produce that much they get that is called differential piece rate system for example in the organization right the marketing department example in the mar marketing department they used to pay wages to the employee based on this principle based on this technique right if seller right if seller sells 10 product per day right to the each product you will get 100 rupees example you may get 1000 rupees per day if the seller sells right only 8 products per day 8 into 100 you will get only 800 rupees if seller doesn't sell any product right 0 into 100 you will get 0 so this is differential piece rate system it means if we work in organization we get the remuneration if we do not work we do not get any remuneration if you produce one product we get 10 rupee if we produce two products we get 20 rupee if we produce three products we get 30 rupees if we produce four we get 40 if we produce 10 we get 100 rupee so this is the concept of differential wage system or differential piece rate system then what is the objective of differential piece rate system to differentiate skilled and unskilled employee to differentiate efficient and inefficient employee and to reward efficient employee to recognize efficient employee to recognize the employees those who reach standard performance to appreciate such kind of employees differential piece rate system is very important dear students these are very very important techniques right very very important techniques which are very very important very essential to manage productions and operations in all type of organizations so techniques of scientific management thank you dear students thanks for watching do share subscribe and comment thank you one and all